Hello and welcome to News Click. The Caravan magazine did a cover story titled Colgate 2 on the coal scam. To discuss the issue, we are joined by Paranjay Gohar Thakur. Welcome to News Click, Paranjay, once again. Thank you, Paranjal. Uh, so, this is this cover story of Caravan which talks about how the coal scam has continued uh, in the Modi government despite the Supreme Court order of 2014. Can you throw some light on this story and what does it talk about basically? The cover story titled Colgate 2.0 by Nilina MS of Caravan Magazine, uh, it's March 2018 issue, throws light on how one particular group, and that's the Adani group, with a Rajasthan government company and also with the support of the Chhattisgarh government, both of which have been ruled by the Bharat, are, are ruled by the Bharatiya Janata Party, how the Adani group appears to have gone ahead without adhering to the Supreme Court's Supreme Court's directions, I would say orders. Just let's step back a little bit in time. In August 2012, the Controller and Auditor General of India, they put out a report which said that the manner in which hundreds of coal blocks had been allotted over a long period of time, all the way from the early 90s, that these were done in an illegal and irregular manner. In fact, they documented that the total loss to the government was 1.86 lakh crores. It was a huge scam. Roughly two years later, in September 2014, the Supreme Court decided that it would cancel the allocation of all these coal blocks that were allotted between 1993 and 2011. That was 214 of them out of 218, all but four, and these were all given to public sector companies. Now, what we see, according to this report, it's been very, very well documented, that a particular joint venture by the Rajasthan government, the Rajasthan Rajya Vidyut Utpadan Nigam Limited, that is, in English, it is the Rajasthan government's, uh, the state government's electricity generation or electricity uh, producing company, together with Adani Enterprises Limited, which is a flagship company of the corporate conglomerate headed by Gautam Adani, they continued with a joint venture which was against the norms that have been specified by the Supreme Court. And in fact, the Supreme Court had categorically written that the way in these joint ventures were structured defeated the purpose of the law. What was the law? The Coal Mines Nationalization Act of 1973. The structure of that joint venture was that 74% was held by the Adani group and 26% by the state government, whereas it should have been just the other way around. And this pertains to the way this particular joint venture is operating a coal block, two coal blocks which are adjacent, the Parsakanta block and uh, that's the Parsa East and the Kanta Basan block. This is all in the Sarguja district of Chhattisgarh. And it clearly shows that this joint venture, which should have been disbanded because this has been in existence since 2007, after September 2014, it should have been wound up and a new or a different joint venture should have been done, but that was not done. So you mean to say that this entire joint venture continued uh, on the preconditions before like whatever was specified between 2014 judgment. Can you throw uh, more light specifically on what has happened in Rajasthan and what has happened in Chhattisgarh when it comes to the BJP government's involvement in All these right. two Now, things. what has been written is that this private company is like a coal mine operator, it's like a contractor. But the coal ministry in its response to what was written, what has been written by Nilina in Caravan, says that it is like a contractor. But the fact is it is not just a contractor, it is the ma major shareholder, it's, it's, it's the owner and the contractor. Now what is seen, earlier in 2012, the, 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 the report of the Controller and Aud Auditor General clearly stated that the Chhattisgarh State Power Generation Limited 
entered into a mining services agreement which with the Adani Group company, Adani Mining, which later became a part of Adani Enterprises, which resulted in a loss of 1,549, about over 1,500 crore rupees. Now, the interesting part of the whole story is that we see that the Rajasthan government, earlier headed by Ashok Gelot, and subsequently by Vasundara Raje, continued with this agreement. Roughly a year after the Narendra Modi government came to power, a new law was put in place. This was called the Coal Mines Special Provisions Act of 2015. Now, this law said that all captive coal blocks, if they are to be given on a lease or on the basis of an agreement to a private company, there should be an auction process. Now, clearly, this was not followed in the case of the joint venture involving the Rajasthan government's company, that is the Rajasthan Rajya Vidyut Utpadan Nigam Limited and Adani Enterprises. And according to the calculations made in that caravan article, the Rajasthan government company will be paying this joint venture at least 6,000 crore rupees more over a 30-year period. And the benefits, that is the second part of the story, which is about the fuel benefits, about which I can talk to you in greater detail, would give it an additional 1,000 crores over this period of time. So, according to the Caravan Magazine's article, these are conservative estimates. If anything, the actual numbers could be far higher. And the amount that they are paying is actually more than uh, what they should actually be getting for free, right? Now, you see, there are two parts to this thing. One is the manner in which the joint venture itself has been allowed to operate apparently against the Supreme Court's directions. There is a second part to the story. The way in which you have a coal mining and a delivery agreement, Rajasthan, the Rajasthan government, is paying much more for coal than what it should be. If you look the quality of the coal that is being mined and in terms of calorific values and other indicators what seem what is according to this article and you know this data is often not disclosed but in this case the data has been disclosed it shows that the joint venture is going to benefit more than it should in terms of the quality of coal and there is a, another part to this story which i think is worthy of discussion and that is the location of the mine itself. You see this Parsa East and Kanta Basin is in the Sarguja district of Chhattisgarh. It is one of the most lucrative and profitable what they say open cast coal mine. That means the coal is located relatively close to the surface of the earth. Now this is north of a forest area called the Hansteo Arand forest, which according to the government of India is one of the largest uninterrupted biodiverse forests of this part of the world in central India. In fact, there is a long history of how the local population, the tribal communities have been up in arms and in fact the Chhattisgarh government under Raman Singh has had the, the dubious distinction of being perhaps the first state in the country to mm -hmm. revoke rights which were already granted under the Forest Rights Act. And it's interesting that Jairam Ramesh who was the environment minister in the UPA government when he was environment minister, he actually opposed the views of the then chief minister of Rajasthan which was Ashok Gelot. In allowing coal mining to take place in this area. You see, so what is very, very clear is that it says at two or three different levels. Now, the Rajasthan Rajya Vidyut Utpadan Nigam Limited is perhaps the only one out of 77 state government companies that had apparently did not com comply with the direction of the Supreme Court in structuring its joint venture. Two, the way in which the whole quality of coal supplied was apparently inflated. It gave undue benefits to the private party, in this case, the Adani Group. And thirdly, they've been allowed to go ahead with mining this area, despite 
uh, not following the green laws and the environment laws. So, uh, can you also throw some light on what actually would have been the loss to the government when it comes to these things and what would have been the profit that the Adanis would have received? See, if you go by the statistics and the calculations made in this article, it's not less than 7,000 crores. Mind you, this is a period of over three decades, but this is, would be, as I go back, not less than 7,000 crore rupees. That's really uh, the gain that has come. So, I, and, and, I mean, that's the gain to the private party, party and the corresponding loss is to the gov government. government. That's right. So, but the Adani Group has a history of doing this with, with different public sector undertakings and I would like to go back to a book that came out a few days ago which, which talks about GSPC. Uh, why is there no check and balance when it comes to these things? All I can say is that, you know, if the government chooses not to act, if the government chooses to turn a blind eye, then people get away. This is, this is a, a form of crony capitalism that we are seeing. Now, it's not I. It's a CAG. That is the Controller and Auditor of General of India. It's a constitutional authority. It is supposed to oversee the way in which public finances are, 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 being, uh, are, are being spent. Now, whether in the case of the coal mine in Sarguja, that is the Parsakanta coal fields, or whether it's the way in which the Gujarat State Petroleum Corporation has dealt with the Adani Group's company, all of it, uh, I mean, uh, the, the auditor has put out in black and white, quantified it literally to the last rupee, the losses to the exche exchequer and the undue benefit that has been given to a private firm or a private group. Now, if the government, despite this kind of strong evidence, it's not I or you or somebody making these allegations, it's the CAG making the allegation, uh, then, then the uh, the answer seems very obvious as, as, as to why and no action is being taken. it's the same BJP which... Uh, which went gaga over these scams and was campaigning in full mode about 2G and Colgate. Absolutely correct. And, 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 and let, let's also accept that there were two members of parliament belonging to the BJP who are both today ministers. One is Prakash Javdekar and the other is Hansraj Ahir who were in the forefront of exposing the Colgate scam and bringing it up in parliament and in the press and writing and talking and shouting about it all along. Now, it's interesting when we look at Colgate Part 2 that I refer to you another article which was written by Noor Mohammed in The Wire. Now, here was, after all this scandal has happened, the then energy minister, who's still the coal minister, that's Mr. Piyush Goel, he came up with a new scheme where he said, that these coal blocks, these allocation of coal blocks and the linkages that would be given by Coal India Limited. After all, Coal India Limited is still the biggest producer of uh, coal in this country. It produces about 80% uh, of the total coal that is uh, mined in this country. And now what had happened, or can, can consumed in the country. He said there would be a reverse bidding procedure. What did this mean? That means that those companies which would use this coal for power generation, the lowest they would reduce the electricity tariff to the consumer, they would get the coal. So this was a way in which was, according to Mr. Piyush Goel, would be benefiting the consumer. And they gave it a nice name. This government uh, loves these acronyms. They called it Shakti, which is an acronym for Scheme for Harnessing and Allocating Koila Transparently in India. Now it's interesting that in September 2017, Coal India Limited allotted over 27 million tons of coal to 10 private power plants for a period of 25 years. Now you look at which were these companies, you'll see that roughly one third of this coal was going to the Adani Group's power plants. Now it's interesting that the Adani Group has said it'll bring down tariff in this reverse bidding process by between one paisa and four paisa. But there are another set of calculations that can be done which says the reduction could be much, much more, that it could be perhaps as high as 50 paisa per unit, which is one kilowatt hour, which means, according to the calculation in this article written by Noor Muhammad, the gains, the windfall gains to these 10 power companies could be as much as 50,000 crores. So we are seeing a series of these benefits going to particular companies who are, uh, what should I say, in the good books of the present regime. Also, I mean, if 
we go by this article, wouldn't it be also the contempt of the court because uh, the, the scams have continued on the basis of previous arrangements? Absolutely. Now, you, it, it's interesting that though the Ministry of Coal responded to the journalist when she wrote this article, the others did not. The Rajasthan government did not, the Chhatt Chhattisgarh government did not, uh, the, the Adani group did not. So, so, I mean, you can draw your own conclusion. I mean, if you are violating the regulations and the guidelines and the directives that have been put out by the apex court in India, it's actually much worse than contempt of court. You, you are violating the law of the land. You are getting undue benefits, which you should not be getting at the expense of the people of this country. Thanks a lot, Paranjay. And Hopefully, all uh, these things will be coming back to your institutions once again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Panjal. Thank you for watching News Click.